Thanks for pressing play, swimmers and swammers. I'm today's host, Garrett McCaffrey, and our guest today is in his 15th year as the head coach at the University of Michigan. In that stretch, he's won the Big Ten Coach of the Year nine times. The combined teams have won 11 Big Ten team titles and one NC2A team title. He's Mike Bottom, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Garrett, <laughs> good to you see so you. Thank you so much for making the time. Uh, as always, you guys really influence uh, the swimming world, and I would love to be a part of that. Yeah, well, you've had such a huge impact on the on the swimming community and swimming uh, as a whole. I kind of want to start with a little more focused question, just kind of figuring out where you guys are at with the Wolverines right now. You came off of a weekend at the SMU Classic and a dual meet at Oakland. What did you learn about your team this past weekend? Well, you know, what's great is that we looked at the at the SMU Classic and the Oakland swimming in a completely different way than we've ever looked at it. Uh, in the past, it was all always about going in there and, and uh, winning. And, you know, uh, my competitive nature would, uh, would get the best of me in those situations. And things have changed in the last few years, uh, as you know. And, uh, and, and I have changed and we have changed as coaches. Uh, and and the idea that we go in there and and just get better, right? And just take the time to learn, to talk, to to do the things we did, whether it be at Oakland or at SMU. Swim fast. That's not, you know we want to swim fast, but to do the things we need to do. And it was a great meet uh, on both sides. Uh, uh, talking to Josh this morning uh, and the other coaches, uh, some of the same things we were learning. At SMU, we were learning at Oakland, and that was stop, look at the race, stop judging yourself, right? And, and, that, and that's really difficult. So instead of saying stop judging yourself, take a moment and feel the feelings, whatever they are, but run them through the filter, and then let's figure out how we're going to get better, right? And, uh, and it was really great. It was a lot of fun as a coach. As a coach, I got to coach as opposed to repair. Uh, what do you mean by that? What is the difference between what you were doing before the pandemic as a repair person, I guess, or, and I, what you're doing now as a coach? Well, that's a great question because, and I, and I know all coaches are, are, are in my spot. Uh, when someone swims great, you just you pat them on the back. You they walk by when they don't meet their own expectation. Uh, there's self judgment that and, and swimmers are really hard on themselves. And I know you know that, Garrett. You've you've dealt with you've coached, right? You know how swimmers and divers both have a high expectation of what they want, how they want to perform, and almost in any situation, there is that expectation. And and whether it be in a practice. Uh, on a set or whether it be at a meet, uh, whether it be in C2As or the SMU Classic or Oakland, there's always an expectation uh, of performance. And and repair happens when that expectation isn't met, right? And a repair has been always an emotional repair. Hey, we can we can do this together. Don't worry about it. We're going to get blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's, it's always similar. Uh, but if we can not have to repair, if we can allow them to go through the emotions and then just talk about how we're going to get better within that race or the next race or next week or in three weeks, uh, there's a huge difference uh, in the conversation. Might not be the same way that other coaches are doing it. And so as you take a whole new freshman class on, or I don't know exactly when you kind of started to, to really emphasize um, a little less from the performance and competitive side, but how do you, how do you see the athletes receiving that? Because sometimes, 
you know, they come over and you're like, so how do you think you did? And you're like, bad. I added three seconds or, you know, <laughs> like, it's just, it's always <laughs> hey, performance. If it's, if it's three tenths, it's still, you know, it's a judgment. Right. And, totally. um, and how do the, how do they respond to that? Yeah. How are you seeing them respond when you try to like say, okay, good, you know, let's, let's go with that emotion. Why don't you walk through that emotion? You're allowed to feel that way, but what are you going to do about it? And how are you going to get right. better? I mean, are they able right. to process that? Not not right away, uh, but I, I know that you've been looking at some of our, uh, you know, our social media, uh, some of my social media. But what what this whole year, last summer to this year has been a focus of what what can we do? What can we do to be better? How do we get better? And and it's a it's a matter of looking at what we can do, because it's a different viewpoint, right? It's, it's looking at the horizon as opposed to looking in a mirror that's six inches in front of your face. Uh, you're going to see the pimple. Absolutely, you're going to see the pimple when you're looking at that mirror six inches in front of your face. But if you're looking at the horizon and you're talking about what you can do, uh, there's a whole different feel. There's a whole different feel. So your question was, how, how are they receiving it? We got through the SMU because I, I was at SMU. Uh, we got through the SMU with every single person going there and getting out of it. And when I say going there, looking at the six inch mirror, right? And then move, removing it and looking at the horizon. Every single person at that meet went there, right? Because that's what, that's what great swimmers do. They go there. And every single person was able to emote a little bit and then look at it and get better. And I'll tell you what, that was one of the most exciting coaching jobs that, that I've had, right? Uh, because I, I couldn't say that last year. I couldn't say that year before. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing, you know? Did you see any common trends on things that they can get better at? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're at the beginning of the season, right? So everything. I mean, there's so many great things. And that's that's the other thing, is that swimmers have so many places that they can get better as long as they're not judging themselves, right? Uh, if they're judging themselves, it's really hard to talk about how to get better, right? Because it's then you're, you're – every, every communication is like a needle – it, it it hits into a you know into a difficult area right and if that's an ego issue and i'm either good or bad based on that that place uh it's it's a really tough conversation on the other side of it if it's a horizon conversation if it's hey look at all this time and space we have there's so many little things i mean how you eat how you sleep your turns, your stroke, your timing, your, I mean, there's so many great things that we could talk about uh, that give hope, right? That give hope. And that's really what's needed with every single swimmer and coach in this world right now is we need hope that we can do this together, right? Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do. And that's what our coaching staff, I mean, we talked about this as a coaching staff. We're, I mean, Oakland was, was talking the same way we were talking, right? This is, this is a, an understanding that we need to, in order to create champions, which is our goal, those who stay will be champions. It's helping them with all of these small uh, pieces of life as they move forward. Uh, as opposed to, you know, focusing on their performance. Has your definition of champions changed? If no. they say they'll be champions, has no, that my, definition my changed? Has, mine not, mine not. Uh, my uh, viewpoint of how to get there has softened, definitely softened, right? Um, because as you said, uh, there's, there's so many things to get better at. Right? And coming out of, and I think this was before before we started the program, coming out of high school, uh, there's there's a you know a pattern that's set that's been successful, right? And and those 
those patterns become part of who they are, right? It, it, it embeds into their ego as who they are. Uh, and, and, and I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but the important thing that now I understand as a coach is I don't need to injure that. Right? It's, I don't want to injure that. What I want to do is open them up to another way of doing things that, that I believe is better, right? And so the way I coach now is, hey, this is what I believe. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it is, but if you don't learn it and try it, how how are we going to know, right? Uh, and that has been kind of a an ongoing theme is trying to step back uh, from authority uh, and and step into a coaching partnership, which is really difficult when you have seventy athletes, you know, seventy seventy five athletes to to work with. Uh, and that's why we we're we're doing it as a coaching staff, right? I it's not this is not for me. This is I have an incredible staff. What a wonderful Josh, Dr. Josh, Josh White and I've been together for 15 years, right? And I've known him years before that. And you know, Sam Winsman was one of our swimmers, right? <laughs> Callie Beedron has been here for uh six years now. Um and then Priscilla. Priscilla is like she's she stepped on board and she was one of us right away, uh, and then we have a new a new uh, Kristen Adir has has been here for just a few months and she is she's putting out all the all the stuff on social media and she's done a great job. So uh, we're all on the same page, understanding what we're trying to do uh, is because this is a this is a year of repair uh, after two years of of really tough. Stuff living really tough living and not just for swimmers but for coaches uh and for parents and for everybody right uh right. yeah yeah i want to kind of dive into that social media sharing that you're doing because there's a bunch of angles to it one you're putting out you know your secret sauce in some ways you are sharing um you know some very detailed technique approaches and two, you're taking the time to teach it, which sometimes early season coaches won't slow down enough to really take that time for the reasons that we kind of alluded to right there. There's patterns set in high school and how much can you really change technique in four years of college after they've had success and have been doing it a certain way for so long. But you're taking the time, you're talking them through it, you're teaching them technique and you're sharing it with everybody. Um, it, I guess I kind of want to start with what what kind of focus points are you trying to get across to them? Let's start with like a freestyle. If you're sharing technique stuff, what things do you really want your freestylers, all 70 of them, to understand about freestyle? And we can dive into all sorts of different strokes and, and the thing behind it. But let's start with freestyle focus points. Freestyle focus point. I'm going to step in, you know, again, I'm going to step back one step because you said it. Making changes is not easy coming out of high school, coming out of last season, coming out, you know, those are not easy. So the first step is to open them up, right? Open them up. One, I mean, we have a value system. I got it on my board right here. The team is the base of the values, but trust and gratitude is the next rung of our, of our value system. So talking about, Hey, what is, what is trust, right? What is team? What is, you know, how do we look at, all the things we have and not want more right uh and appreciate what we what we have and i think that the idea is to open up we got to open up right i got to open up you got to open up swim swim's got to open up a little bit right uh and the coaches and we got to open up right and and what i'm trying to do and you ask why i'm secret, sharing my secret sauce i'm going to share everything this year right and and the reason is is because it's it has nothing to do with recruiting it has nothing to do with my brand right i'm i'm old right i'm old i'm done right i'm i'm done branding i'm I, my history is is my brand what i want what we want to accomplish is that cooperation in in our community which is a swim community which is a college swim community in in specific uh, we got to help each other. We got to open up. We got to share. We got to, you know, in, in the old days, we used to do it a lot more, right, than it, than it has been in the past. And I've lived the old days, 
right, where people got together and talked about everything they did. Uh, then it, we went through this this dip of of protecting secrets and right. The truth is, you know, that if you want to know, you can know. There's there's lots of places that you can get the information. So what I want to do is, first of all, give that out, give it out, because you know I'm not going to be around forever. And if I can give it out, that's going to last longer than I am. Uh, and then it also give other people opportunities to make it better. And and that better was going to come back to me, and I'm going to get better. Uh, so uh, that's part. That's the first step. The second step is that you know you're talking about freestyle, right? I've been working on freestyle since you know uh, the times when, when, with the race club, and even before that, uh, we called the sprint team. Uh, and sprint team in 96 we started working on the three styles of freestyle right uh and and we've we had that video that came out in 2000 about the team and it had all three styles out there how to do them what to do but we're focusing on teaching all three of those styles right now there's a hybrid that gary hall senior has put on the race club video about uh, you know, one uh, he calls it the I don't know what he calls it. It's a hybrid thing where one side's a, a shoulder driven, the other side's a a, a hip driven, and uh, and that's that's a. But in my opinion, that's a combination of the two. Uh, so we have drills out there, and I'm going to continue to put out drills of how to understand, you know, the the, the points of the freestyle, the, the balance point. Uh, the catch point, the entry point, the exit point, you know, the extension, extension point, the turnaround point, all of the different places that freestyle uh, you can focus on, right? Because learning happens when you have a system, right? When you have something you could think about, okay, how am I doing right here, right now, right? So what we've done is slow down the freestyle to the point where, you know, you have an entry point and that entry point is tied to, to an extension extension point, right? And that catch point is tied to the turnaround point. And all of those, and the balance points tied to both sides. Uh, but again, those are, you know, those you can see in the video. We're going to have more about that uh, on my Instagram. I'm going to keep putting it out. Uh, and that's freestyle. And we got the backstroke. And we're going to keep putting that out as well. So uh, I don't know how technical you want to get, Garrett. I want to nerd right, out, so. Mike. Let's dive into it. So the three styles of freestyle are shoulder driven, high elbow, and hip driven. Well, it's it's shoulder driven, which is a sprint a connected stroke uh, with flat hips and and uh, punching off the punching off the hips. Right. Uh, the hip driven is is very efficient, high elbow connection. Uh, Ian Thorpe, high elbow. Uh, you know, uh, and then the uh, body driven is the uh, is the one at the very end where, you know, you'll see Nathan uh, do a lot of that. Uh, and, and, you know, it's really funny because I show the video uh, or the uh, yeah, the video of Nathan in the world championships when he first won his first world championship in the short course 100 freestyle where he executed all three styles of the freestyle uh in in that one 100 and and uh you know the the, the shoulder driven uh morphed into a little bit of we call it long shoulder long shoulder driven which was a little slut little uh releasing the hips a little bit more uh and allowing the, high, the elbow to catch uh and he was really the first one that that put it all together uh in a race that that we had on video so it was kind of fun and i continue to show that to the team uh, thank you, Nathan. If you're here, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah, one of the best freestylers of all time, and somebody you've worked with since he was 17 years old. But um, I, I want to kind of dive into another point then, since we're talking about it, and it's something that I've like kind of clinged on to, and I ask a lot of guests about it because it's something that I'm trying to figure out as a coach myself, and that's rotation. Because you said it yourself, a um, shoulder-driven stroke with flat hips. Um, is more sprint. And you definitely see that with Nathan, those hips are not moving down and up a lot, right? There's not a ton of rotation in those hips for a lot of the top level freestylers. But then if you look at Katie Ledecky, even those hips aren't moving very much. Um, and then, you know, Russell Mark came out during COVID with these great videos that talked about road, you know, all different strokes. And he talked about rotation um, for freestyle at the top level is about 35 degrees average like for top freestylers and for backstroke 
it's 25 degrees, which is so much different than what we were taught and what a lot of people are still t- teaching with hip driven backstroke and, and shoulder shoulder deep so that you're getting the catch up kind of backstroke. What, where do you stand on rotation? I know that that's such a big general question, but I know you have a lot of things to kind of enlighten us all about. So, Well, I, I don't look at it as, you know, the number of degrees because I'm not that technical. Uh, uh, I, I, subscribe to the Rick DeMont uh, School of Art, right? Where uh, it, it, is, it is what it is as far as angles, but it's also uh, has a lot to do with the, with the body you're working with, right? And, and uh, you know, you got, you got somebody with really long legs, right? Short torso, right? You're, you're probably going to get a lot of more stable, right? Hips as opposed to long torso and short legs. So, uh, and, and I know that there's, a, there's always the, the bell shaped curve, right. <laughs> Where you got your 35 degrees, but yeah, yeah. Right. So what I, w- the way I look at it is with hip driven stroke, you are using more of your core, your, your hip motion to get the power. I'm going to just rotate here. Or rotate my chair here. So you're out on your, you get that nice high elbow catch and you rotate, right? So if you get a little more rotation on that, right, you're, you're good. Right? And, and how much of that is, is something you can play with. And it's a lot of fun to play with. Right? And as a coach, I, I'm not going <laughs> to, you tell somebody you got, you, you're over rotating, you, you're going, you're going uh, 40 degrees instead of 35 degrees or, or whatever it is, and that just gets in people's heads. Remember that. Remember when you were a swimmer, right? You try to overthink. You try to overthink, and and that will mess you up, right? Uh, and that's again, if, if we're talking about swimmers, understand that when they were young, they loved the water. They loved feeling the water. They loved playing in the water. And what we have, what we have done, and, and rightfully and understandably so, is we've taken them from you know this play to this the structure, right? And sometimes that structure has a tendency to uh, inhibit change, right? Uh, and so again, I, I don't want to. I mean, Russell Mark's awesome, and the way he gives the coaches information is awesome. Right. What we want to try to do as coaches, I think, is help them feel right. So get if you want hip driven, get them in with a right fin and a right paddle. And I call them Thornton paddles, which uh, right. North Thornton uh, developed them with an idea from Dave Salo and Eddie Re- or uh, Randy Reese put those two paddles together. And I'm still using them and we're cutting them out of plastic. I asked Nord if I could do that way, way time ago a long time so ago a, and he said just so it. i understand it's a paddle that goes from the top of your finger all the way to the bottom or the top of your elbow essentially do, down your right arm. right with with a good uh paddle that actually you could feel where you're putting the pressure on the paddle right so uh we get them out and you, you just get them on their side and get that elbow position that comes up and then snap the knee instead of snapping the legs snap the knee so that you can feel those hips come around and you start to feel that power into that, into that high elbow catch, right? They start feeling that and then they start using that. And then you start asking them to increase their stroke rate or increase their stroke length or do, you know, you then start talking in those terms and they'll change their hip rotation based on what you're, asking them to do right but you tell them that you, you, you need a 45 what does that mean coach right? totally <laughs> all right there you go that's, no, that's my- great it's great and now I'm, I'm hesitant to ask the next question about breath timing and short <laughs> axis but i'm gonna ask anyway because i'm like you I'm, I'm open to being wrong and that's why i wanted to hear your opinions on it and i i agree it's so much more of an art and it's got to be adaptive to the, to the athlete. Um, but in theory, when you're going through, you know, like teaching breaststroke, 
breath timing is sometimes a big difference in different strokes. Is there one particular way that you believe is best, which you could be open to being wrong, or is there a bunch of different depending on body styles? I believe breathing is really good. <laughs> I think everybody needs to breathe more. <laughs> you know, here's an interesting, I just read this from the CDC, that 44% of those teenagers that went through the pandemic in the last two years are feeling uh, sad, unhappy, and hopeless, right? And you're, you're bringing up breathing. I'm just going down your path. I'm not going to breaststroke, but I'm going breathing, right? 44% uh, of teenagers are, are unhappy with their circumstances uh, and where they are, right? And, and are, are feeling helpless, right? We need to breathe. We need to take a deep breath and stop worrying about the little things about when you're going to breathe in breaststroke and start thinking about, again, let's just play a little bit, right? Let's just play a little bit. How does it feel when you take an early breath, right? How does it feel when you drive your head down under the wave as opposed to falling into the wave right how does your kick how strong is your kick uh, and I, again i i don't want to go because i don't think you're wrong i'm not saying anybody's wrong what i'm saying is that we got to stop we as coaches need to take a step back right uh from our books uh not that we shouldn't always have them coming in but when we're dealing with our student athletes understand that that's what they are Right? They're students and they're athletes. And the way that they're going to learn is by stepping back into control. Does that make sense? Because they're feeling, they're feeling hopeless. They're feeling out of control. They do not have control. And that's what the pandemic has done to our, to our swimmers, our teen swimmers, now college swimmers. Is And the more control we put on them, whether it be put your head this way or put your head this way, the more uh, we're not helping them, right? And, and it's, not, I, I, it's not wrong, and you're not hurting them. But what I'm proposing, and I'm going to continue to put it out on, on my social media, is it's time to get back and just play a little more, right? Take a deep breath. <sighs> And you, one of the questions you ask is, okay, how is that going to affect training? How is that going to affect yardage? You know what? It's going to reduce it. It's going to reduce it. And and this is a this is a difficult question, even on my deck. Uh, is can we uh, put the programming in outside the pool so that they can do the play time? Right. And Josh is amazing. Dr. Josh White is just uh, is so amazing at scheduling in the, the, the fun times. Right. We had a we had a, on Saturday. Uh, they were rolling the dice <laughs> for for sets. Right. They were rolling the dice. We had people up here on deck and he was rolling the dice on the, how many numbers you're going to do in this one. And he had a. He had this formula, and he's just so great. And they were having fun. They were laughing, right? And they swam. They had a great time. And they got the yardage in, right? But, again, it's about moving, stepping back, right? And uh, and here's, here's a, you know, something that's going on in the coaching world uh, that since I'm old, right, and I've lived a long time, and I'm not feeling like I have to prove anything anymore, uh, I not, I'm not anxious about learning everything. I'm not anxious about applying everything. I'm more anxious about my student athletes and how they're feeling and how they're getting through what they're doing. And uh, my anxiety is no longer in what I'm doing, but in in what this how are how are people moving? How are they moving forward? Right. Um, and, and that's, I'm, I'm encouraging, I'm not saying that that's wrong, 
to do what, what a lot of coaches do because you're going to get success. You're going to get performance success as you learn, as you implement. Right? But you're going to get personal success and personal happiness and personal satisfaction about seeing a smile at the end of a, a practice and especially a smile at the end of a, a swim meet where the swimmer didn't swim as, as well as, as they wanted and you want, right? Uh, and, and, and a hope that's going to go forward to help that person get better. Right. And that's where, that's where I am, Gary. And I'm sorry, I keep coming back to it, but that's, that's where I am. No, I, I appreciate it. And I'm a hundred percent on board and I definitely understand what you're talking about, what we've realized when we had to slow down for the pandemic and competition was taken away and then what, what's left right, is, is right, it the person. Right. But I also, as a coach, get the question, how do I get better? And when you talk how about get better, yeah. to get better, I, I guess I'm just curious how you implement that because. Great. Um, well, you, you, you saw so, some of the great things we're implementing is some of the drills that we've worked on over the years and years and years. And we're teaching those drills early on in the season. Uh, and then we're using those drills as aerobic conditioning, right? Uh, again, Josh is really good about programming drills in at intervals that allow them to play, but play with a push, right? So we get the heart rate up on some of those drilling sets to, you know, uh, what we call pink, right? White pink, which is pretty high aerobic, red's threshold, and, and, and pink is right below it. So 26 27 heart rate on 10 seconds. Uh, and that's some great play, but it's some pre play with programming. Uh, and, and again, I, I, I have a hard time doing that. I like to sit up on deck and watch and smile and chat, uh, but that doesn't get some of the work that needs to be done in. So your question is, how do you do both? You, you do it with something like Dr. Josh White does. He gets it programmed in. Uh, and I love putting it, put it into the sprinters, right? I'll take a set that he's doing and I'll, or I'll put him over there and say, Hey, there's good stuff. Let's go do that. Right. Uh, so do you guys do goals still? Are there goal meetings or goal sheets at the beginning of the year? What does success look like this season for Michigan? Well, that is a great question. That is a great question. Uh, the swimmers and coaches, uh, we're we are set you know we want performance right and we have a measured performance and again i there's nothing wrong with measuring performance uh i think where we fail is in in and i'm <laughs> i'm tough right i i am very competitive very judgmental right it's in my nature i'm working to step away from that but i still it's still there and i'm not i'm not uh, getting down on myself for it i just try to move it so goal times, we got them right. We have we have time. We have we have a, a grade point, right? We want to achieve a certain grade point. We want to achieve a certain goal. We want to we want to battle at Big Tens. Big Tens is here, right? We want to battle, right? We know that we're not the best team in the Big Ten, right? We're not even the second best team in the Big Ten right now, but we want to be able to battle, and and that's a goal, right? Uh, is a goal to win. I, at this point, I think our goal is to battle, right? Uh, uh, do you want anything more specific? Right. We do, we do have goals. Uh, yeah. I'm just curious, like, cause I mean, when we talk about specifics, you're talking about stepping back and, and making sure that you're taking care of the person. And I just, and I don't want to put metrics on everything. You're right. If we put metrics on everything, then it, it becomes, you know, maddening for both the coach and the swimmer. But I'm just curious, how how you judge you know a, a good performance versus a not good performance <laughs> how you give them feedback that allows them to get better and if there was right. something that you're working towards so and like you said we're stepping back from that competitive nature and it's it's hard but at the end of the day it is a results driven industry just like most yeah, of we're talking hundreds of seconds right yeah, yeah. You know, so I, we're still arguing about that hundredth of second did mike kavik and michael phelps hit the ball <laughs> <laughs> But you're right. You're absolutely right. And this is the tough part about being a coach, isn't it? Right? We are in a judgment industry. We're in a judgment industry. This is good. This is bad. Right? 
how do you get away from that? Right? The only way that I understand to get away from it is, is with values, right? With an understanding of, of values that are higher than performance, right? Uh, and valuing an individual, a person, right? Valuing that person uh, apart from what they're doing in the pool is, is part of that. But it's tough, right? Because you got your you got your best athletes, you got your athletes are they're fighting to be good, and you got your athletes down there that some of them don't care about being better, right? Uh, but you value every one of them, right? And you try to help them get what they want out of what we're doing, right? Uh, and I think the only way to do that is to have performance goals, right? The only way. Right. We gotta have performance goals. We have to have. We gotta. We have to try to win, right? Because that's that's the nature of our beast. Right? It is a beast, but it's a beast, and it's who we are. So I'm not. I'm not uh, saying, hey, throw away your goals, throw away your your drive. What I'm saying is maybe put the play back in to all of this, right? Because I and Gary used to say it all the time uh, that probably some of the best times he had when he was a kid in the pool was racing to get to from here to there. Right. But there was a goal. There was a race. There was a finish. There was a winner. There was a loser. All of that was involved. Right. But Gary would be the first person to say that, that that's part of the process. That's part of what we're doing. It's not, it's not it. That's not it, right? That's part of it, right? So what about you? What what kind of goals do you have? Because you said it earlier, you have oh. nothing left to prove. You've done it all. I mean, you've created Olympic champions. You've created NC2A champions. You've led an NC2A team title. I mean, the only team to win in the last few decades, not named Cal or Texas, it feels like. And I mean, you've done it all. What motivates you still to this day to keep going? That's that again. Great, great question, and and I don't, I have a, probably a lot of about a million answers right to that. Uh, you know, I, I get so excited on deck, uh, running practice uh, when I see change. Right when I see people buying into making changes, when I see them stepping up and and competing. Right. When I see one person put their hand on the on the wall ahead of another person and get excited about it, and the other person get disappointed about it. So I get excited. What makes me better is all of it, right? I'm talking out of one side of my mouth saying, hey, we shouldn't, you know, judge, but I'm judging, right? I'm judging. And I'm putting that into a bigger picture. I'm putting it into the horizon as opposed to the mirror. So the judgment becomes, damn, you owe him a sandwich, right? And then it's laughing about it and going on, right? Uh, and I, maybe it's just the, the judgment isn't as harsh. It's more, hey, this is a game. And I'll tell you what, our student athletes know about gaming more than we ever will know. Although you probably were in the gaming generation. I just played Pong. <laughs> and I just wanted to get the thing back and forth a couple times. But they understand that you could lose and you could hit reset and you could go back, right? What we have to do is get them to that point of just being okay, right? With losing, hitting reset, and then going back and not stepping on that landmine again, right? But avoiding that guy and knowing that right around the corner, there's that dude that's got the gun or that woman that's got the grenade or whatever it is. Because we can hit reset and we can go back and we could do this, right? Uh, it's when it's when the the forty four percent of the teens sit and say, "I can't do this. I, I can't do this." That's what stops the forward progress. And, and that's why my first talk to the team was, Hey, let's, let's understand that we can do this. Right. And wherever there's a can't, there's a hundred cans, right? So you can't make the Olympic team. 
guess what you can do? Right? You can score points for Michigan. And that's pretty important. Right? Uh, hey, you're not going to get a 4.0 this year, but you can get a 3.8. You can't get an A in that class, but you can get a B. Right? Uh, because of the pandemic and the shutdown of individuals by outside sources, by outside powers, by authorities, uh, we've been programmed. We all been programmed, right? To put our mask on at this time, to not put our mask on this time. But what's the difference? I don't know, right? So thinking for ourselves has got to come back. We got to be able to think for ourselves, right? Sometimes going 60 miles an hour in a 55 is the best thing to do. Whoa, Mike's going to break the law. I'm going to break the law, right? Because it's sometimes it's the best thing to do, and it's a choice. And if I get a ticket, I get a ticket. That's the consequence of my choice. But we have to understand that we choose, right? Because hopelessness comes out of non-choice, right? Hope comes out of seeing all the choices, Right, all the cans. I mean, this is a crazy great society. We got so many things we can do, right? And and we have in the pool. There's so many ways to get better, right? So many different ways to get better. And as coaches, our job is to just keep throwing them out there. Just keep throwing them out there. And as teammates, their their job is to keep throwing them out there with each other. Uh, again, I'm talking philosophy. You want to talk specifics? I'm sorry, Gary. No. <laughs> Ask another question. I'll get back to it. <laughs> I'm right on board with you. I'm right on board with you. And I completely agree. It just, you know, like the goal is to to help people in formative times of their life, help them. And now through what has been a very difficult stretch. And um, I, I guess this is a more personal question, but um, you just, you sound like somebody who's done a lot of the work. And I know that you have a background in education and psychology and stuff and understand that stuff, but it sounds like you've been kind of working on that stuff with yourself and being aware of your competitive competitiveness and being aware of the fact that the kids and the swimmers are really hard on themselves. It's probably coming from a place closer to home with you. Is that, is that pretty accurate right. that you've been doing some of that work as well? <laughs> Garrett, I have two teenage daughters at home Boom. <laughs> and 11 year old. <laughs> <laughs> and I love them dearly. I love them so much. And I just want to be a good dad. But guess what? I screw up all the time, right? I'm just trying to get better, right? And, and uh, you asked what motivates me. That motivates me. Right? I learn at home and I bring it here. Uh, I learn here, I bring it home. I screw up at home, I bring it back here and be better, right? Uh, I don't know if that works for you. Yep. Yep. I guess I was just curious how you've changed over the pandemic and yeah. you know, how it's changed you and any kind of specifics. And well, uh, I mean, I've been I, talking about it the whole time, but I'll just yeah. leave that. Open, I think I part, part of it and Garrett, and here's, here's something that I've had to deal with. I mean, I get pissed off, right? I don't like to be told what to do, right? I am a rebellious individual, right? And anybody who knew me in my old days knows how I was a rebellious. I, I had lines, I had limits, but man, I hate getting told what to do, right? I hate it. Uh, so part of me has been dealing with a rebelliousness that I've carried with me all these years and changing a rebellious spirit into an understanding spirit with rebellion, right? Because I think they can be combined. Right? I think, and, and that's, that's what I'm trying to teach my team is, hey, your rebellion is good. Right? It, it's good as long as it's not self-destructive. Right? Understand that you, the, the rebellion of today is a, a very positive thing as long as it's done in a positive way. Right Now, who's going to say what is a positive way? Right? Personally, I think a positive way is if they're not harming, hurting themselves, if they're, not, if they're making mistakes, and then understanding consequences of those mistakes and those consequences aren't too strong and they understand that making a mistake is the best way to learn. Uh, you know, sometimes the consequences in this day and age are such harsh, especially with social media. They're so harsh, right? Uh, that they're afraid to try, right? <laughs> because you don't want to get ridiculed, right? You don't want to get ridiculed by, by social media, 
for making a mistake. And yet, who hasn't made a mistake? Who hasn't done some of the things that people are getting ridiculed for? Uh, you know, and I, I just feel like we got to, we got to, again, social media, and this is where Swim Swim can help, right? Stop. Just stop. Stop ridiculing people. Stop, you know, calling people out for their mistakes because everybody makes the mistakes, right? Start calling people out for what they're doing right and what they're doing better and what they're, right? Asking the questions of how are you, how, just like you're doing, how are you getting better? Right. And bringing those forward. Right. And, and just, you know, we don't need to talk about people's mistakes over and over again, but I'll tell you what, it makes people feel better about talking about other people's mistakes because we know we all make them. Right. And it makes us feel better. Well, let's stop feel better about other people. Let's start feeling better about getting better. Right. As, as a, as a team, right. We're all a team. This swim community right now needs each other. Right. I need Eddie Reese. I'm glad he's still around. I need Dave Durden. We need each other. Last question. And, you know, I feel like we've been talking for getting close to an hour here. And it's very evident that you're all about helping people. And that's what motivates you. And being there for your family, being there for your 70 athletes, being there for your coaches um, is what, what drives you. And especially during this hard time, making sure that they have somebody who is there to look for the good parts and find the way through. Um, but in order to do that, you know, it's, it's like the, uh, the rules on the airplane, you got to secure your mask before you secure others. What do you do for self-care? And I think this is just as important when it comes to helping others as well. What do you do to take care of you? Um, what do you oh, do to kind of I look at my health app. Okay. <laughs> do I get 10,000 steps in? Am I getting my 10,000 steps in? Um, but that, you know, again, I could be way better at that. Right. And, and, uh, Nort, Nort used to, you know, I, I talked to Nort until, you know, three days before he passed. Uh, and he was such a wonderful mentor and incredible person in my life. Uh, you know, he used to go every day, and do go to the gym and he would just make sure he got there and he did his thing. He, he did this thing where you do stair mastering. <laughs> um, and I need to do that. Right. And I appreciate you asking me about that because I need to get uh, more than 10,000 steps and I need to start to do those things. Right. And, uh, you know, I spend time alone. Uh, I, I'm, I have a spiritual side of myself. I spend time every day with my God. And I, I try to understand how I can be better, uh, in that direction. Uh, and then, you know, I, I actually got in the, back in the water <laughs> last summer and I love it. I'm going to start to do that again uh, as well. So we just started a master's program here. Uh, and, uh, you know, our new, our new assistant, Kristen Adir is, is on, on that. We had our first master's practice today at noon uh, and it was awesome. It's great to see people back in the pool and, and I want to join them. Great. I hope some point we, uh, we cross paths and we can get a swim in in between sessions. Cause yeah. that is one of the ways I do it too. Just kind of staying in touch with the water, staying healthy and, and disconnecting Mike, this has been awesome. It's so good to talk to you. You just, your energy is amazing. It's contagious. I feel more excited about practice today. I feel more excited about, you know, coaching today. And it's your honesty um, and putting it out there like that, that I know I appreciate very much. And I know our listeners will too. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, best of luck this year to Michigan. Um, and uh, I hope to talk to you again very soon. Because it's been well, Garrett, thank you for having me on. Really appreciate you and what you do. All right, keep it going. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.